Hello and welcome to another small game let's play. I'm doing this one basically as part of a series for a bundle that will be live at the time of posting. The bundle is the Gender Constellation Bundle for 2024. The link to purchase it on itch.io will be in the description of this video. Full disclosure, I do have a couple games in the bundle itself, but this one I'm about to play is not one of mine because I felt weird about just let's playing something I'd made regardless. Please do check out the bundle, support the devs, not just me. Uh, whether you purchase it or comment, rate it, review it, anything to like spread it, share it, helps a lot for just even the visibility of these games that they're not easy for people to find, even if they would enjoy them. But with all that preamble, let's get started with this game. This is Andromeda Chained. I'm sorry, Andromeda, but this has to be done. Your father says, weeping. The manacles he's holding out to you clank as his hands tremble. He and you are standing at the edge of the coast of your kingdom. Uh, I feel uh, And as the waves crash against the rocks, they spray you with salt and sea. The outcropping you're on rises from where you stand to a few feet above your head, with a chain attached to the overhang. It leads down to the iron manacles your father is gripping. They are for you. Your mother isn't here. You don't know where she is, but you, should, you suspect she's hidden herself in the palace in shame. Not even your father, the king, could look her in the eye after she brought the wrath of the Nereids of Poseidon against your kingdom. Furious that she would dare to boast her daughters, your, beauty was greater than theirs, the lovely sea nymphs complained to Poseidon about the offence. Growing angry himself, the god sent the monster Ketos to ravage the coast. The only way to appease their anger was this, the oracle said. This that your father is doing now. Chaining you, naked, to the rocks to be sacrificed to the creature. Your father holds the manacles out to you so you can place your wrists in them. So again... Move my hands away and say, I will not let you do this. Place my hands in. Say there is no need for apologies, father, or ask, but can this not be avoided somehow? I'm going to start off at least being uh, cooperative. Place my hands in. There's not much you can do after all. Your father lets out another sob as he clicks the manacles shut and locks them. I truly am sorry, Andromeda. You nod. Tears streaming down his cheeks, he chokes out. I love you, dear daughter. Good, goodbye. Then he turns away, making his way down the steep rocks. It isn't long until he disappears from view. Wait on the rocks. You stand on the rocks for an indeterminable amount of time. Waves roar, gulls cry overhead, and your arms are beginning to ache from being held above your head by the chain. There's nothing to do but wait here to die. I look for a means of escape, await my fate, wonder why I have to be naked, think about how glad I am to be helping my kingdom, or think about my father. Again, let's go extremely cooperative. I'm very glad about this. <clears throat> You smile wistfully as a wave breaks against the rocks, the spray filling your nose with the bitter scent of the sea. Do you want to die? No, of course not. You can hardly think of anyone who would. Are you willing to do so in service to your family and your kingdom? Yes. You're fairly certain. Yes. In fact, you feel brave doing it. You dare say your sacrifice is similar to that of your father's soldiers, laying their lives down to keep Ethiopia safe and strong. That makes your inevitable death honorable, doesn't it? You'd like to think so. You tell yourself things such as these until you see a fast approaching speck in the sky. There's a pale blur against the blue, getting bigger as it approaches from the mainland. It doesn't look or move anything like a bird, too tall and thin and quick and with no visible wings. You blink a couple times, wondering if the heat and burning light 
are making you see things that aren't there. The speck continues to get closer, though, and as it does, you can discern that it appears to be a human, or at least in human form. Hermes? No, no, it's definitely a human, a man. He doesn't glow with the mythic aura that deities have. He's holding a golden sack with a glittering sickle sword at his belt and a pitch-deep helm upon his head. You do, in fact, see wings now, but they're fluttering from the sandals on his feet. How this stranger obtained these magical items, you don't know, but he must be a hero of some sort, favoured by the gods. He does seem to be heading in your direction. Is he here to save you? Dare you hope that to be the case? It isn't long before you can examine him properly. The man is handsome, with fair skin, soft curls that frame his clean-shaven face, and large, umber-dark eyes that hold your gaze even as he alights on the, at the rocks nearby. Once he lands, his cloak settling about him, he takes a few steps toward you with a smile. Lovely maiden, are you indeed Andromeda, daughter of Cepheus, the king of Ethiopia? I, Ethiopia? I, apologies about how I pronounce pretty much anything here. You nod, confused. The stranger puts, his, puts a hand to his heart and holds out the other towards you. I am Perseus, son of Danae and almighty Zeus. I have heard of your kingdom's plight and your soon-to-be sacrifice. As a hero, I cannot bear to let any maiden fall to such a fate. And, he says, almost looking bashful, as a man, I admit I cannot bear to let that fate fall upon a maiden as beautiful as you. Thus, I have come to save you, he says, he continues, by slaying the foul beast. In return, I have asked your father for your hand in marriage, for I fear I have fallen in love at the sight of you. He gave his assent, so here I stand. He smiles again, waiting for your response. I can accept, for I have fallen in love. I cannot. I can say I do not know you well enough to accept this. Refuse or question when he talked to my father. I feel like the nod... <laughs> feels more accurate to the nod feels more accurate to the uh cooperativeness of it's not a genuine falling in love i'm just like yeah okay sure not the man's smile falters at the curt gesture was he expecting more it's not as if you could throw yourself at his feet in grateful adoration you're bound upright to the rock and you're not sure if you would anyway you've spent days resigning yourself to your unpreventable death it's taking you a moment to process that this man is going to prevent it. You should be grateful, so you are. You just need to adjust, not only to the fact that your life will continue, but that it will continue with him as your husband. It doesn't really matter if you adjust or not, of course. Perseus has already obtained your father's blessing, and thus has obtained you. Your eyes rest on the hero's sandals, which are surely from Hermes. The sandal's wings flutter and twitch awkwardly as he stands in front of you. You are very lovely, Perseus says softly, breaking the silence. I wish to kiss you. You watch his foot step forward. Do as you will. You turn your head to look up, waiting for him. The smile is gone from his face, but he approaches nonetheless, he reaches out his hand to gently cup your cheek. As he leans in for the kiss, a roar echoes in the distance. Perseus whips his head toward the sand, hand on his sword hilt. You can't actually see what he's looking at, chained up the way you are. It's impossible to crane your neck at an angle where the outcropping doesn't obstruct your view. But you know what it must be. The roar draws closer, shifting into some sort of unending, breathless screech. The air seems to vibrate from the noise. Your head buzzes, your muscles twitch, your teeth rattle. You don't know what you want to do more. 
clasp your hands over your ears before they bleed, wrap your arms around your violently shaking body, or simply curl into yourself on the cold rock as the salted spray whips your skin raw. But you can do none of those things, standing in your nakedness in chains, so you sob instead, despite yourself. Any defiance, love, question, acceptance within you is swallowed by leadened fear. Perseus doesn't seem to waver at all from the sound, nor the sight of the hard creature, whatever it actually looks like. That's why he's the hero and you're the maiden who needs saving, isn't it? Through your tears you see him spring into the air with determination, the wings of his sandals lifting him upward with ease, the flash of sun reflecting off his blade makes you flinch. Once you blink, he's vanished from sight. Whether from haste or the helm, you know not. It's hard to hear anything over the monster's screeches and your own shuddering sobs. The hero's shouts, no doubt full of bold declarations and courage, are quickly torn away by the raging winds. But it seems that almost as soon as the battle starts, it stops with an ear-splitting shriek. The air and sea rush outward from the monster's clearly massive form as it crashes down. Bloodied water swells in its wake, rising above even the outcropping where you started. You watch as a wave inexorably arcs over you. The scrape of metal against rock, chains snapping, and you're in the air now, carried by a strong, wet arms. Perseus shimmers into view around you, splattered in viscera and, plant and panting heavily. Behind him, the wave slams against the cliff where you were but a moment ago. There's only the barest glimpse of a fin slipping beneath its blood-clouded water. Ahead, your father's palace rushes to meet you. It's over. Sprays of blood... <clears throat> Sprays of bright flowers drip down the walls and balustrades of your family's illustrious palace. The lilting notes of strummed lyres and humming reeds bob gently in the ears of your many wedding guests. The scents of perfumes, spices, petals, and food wash through the halls. The ceiling arcs high above everyone's head, carved of the same type of stone that you stood upon only a few days before. Perseus doesn't have a dower, but your father paid no mind to this, and if your mother minded, she breathed no word about it. Preparations for the marriage were made almost as soon as you stepped naked onto the shore. Now, at the post-ceremony feast, your father sits on one side of Perseus. The demigod regales the court with one of his heroic exploits as fine wine pours endlessly from barrels to cups to mouths. Shouts, claps, and laughter swell. He charges forth into another twist in the tail. Your flowing wedding cloth drapes heavily on your still tender skin as you sit on your husband's other side. Your hair has been carefully unknotted, cleaned of brine, and re-knotted into braids laced with cords like sunlight. You rub idly at your scabbing manacle wounds, obscured by shining bangles on your wrists. Andromeda. You turn your head at the sound of your mother's voice, hoarse and quiet from days of disuse. This is the first time you've seen her since your sacrifice turned salvation. Her head is bowed, and the words she says next are nearly lost under the lyrics, under, under the lyres and laughter. Not even Kitos could change her fate, she murmurs. How could I? How could you? She turns her tear-reddened eyes to look at you. I am sorry, daughter, for what has been done. You look back at her, the meaning of her words crashing over you. The, mu the music continues to play, and the tale of Perseus winds, winds 
on. No one will ever change that. Replay. Uh, so I... That is Andromeda Chain, so I don't, I, I am curious how much branching or how the branching works, etc. for this, because, um, in fact, this is my second time through, because I, uh, the first recording basically got lost, um, and I, I'm very curious, because it feels like there's other stuff to poke at, but I'm unclear how much. And I got like little bits of difference, but only so much. If you're curious, the link to the game will be in the description. Go check it out. See for yourself. Make sure to like leave a comment, rate the game, do all that stuff that supports the creator. Especially look at their other work. <laughs> that is all for this one, though. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.